Okay, here's a short video on prefixes. For SI units. We often use prefixes to get numerical values that are scaled in a way that's easy, that's easy for us to talk about. Okay. Um, for example, it would be hard to say I have this capacitor, the size of the capacitor is 3.0 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. Okay, so C is 3.0 times 10 to the minus 6 farads. That just takes a while to write out and it takes a while to say. Okay, but if I look at this prefix, 10 to the minus 6 is micro. Okay, so when I say micro and use this brief letter mu, I could say that that's the same thing as C is equal to 3 microfarads. All right, so when you look on a capacitor, a capacitor is an electronic component. You can actually read, and typically you know, you have something that looks like that on the label. Okay, so it's a shorthand way of taking care of um, something that looks like scientific notation. Okay, the thing about it is, it's because these are these are prefixes that are spaced apart by powers of three. Okay, so for example, 10 to the third, if you multiply by another 10 to the third, you get 10 to the sixth. All right, so you can see powers of three, you know, if, if, if I erase this, you know, and look at the prefixes here, there's six, that's power of three. Three is a power of three. Okay, the exception is centi, you know, centimeter. Uh, that's a power, that's not a power of three. But the rest of these are powers of three. Okay. And remember, we talked about uh, Bloom's taxonomy. There are certain things that you're just going to need to remember. And I would say you need to know and to memorize all of these. Pita and Finto. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little shaky on those happening. They don't come up very often. But anywhere in between, that's important to know about. All right, so let's talk about how this process would work. Let's say I had, um, let's go with the capacitor again. C is equal to 0 0.007. Okay, and I'd rather use an engineering prefix. Okay, so what I need to do is make this show up into one of the uh, powers of three, right? And I'd like to not have a leading, okay, I'd like to have that at least one digit that's to the left of the decimal point, okay? So I'm looking at this and I think, well, what if I multiply by a thousand? Okay, if I multiply by a thousand, that gives me the decimal point right here. Okay, and if I multiply by a thousand, I would need to then divide by a thousand to keep from changing my answer. So if I multiply by milli, abbreviation for milli, 10 to the minus third times 1,000 is one. So this is a fancy way of saying one, all right? But instead of having 1,000 here, we move the 1,000 into this position and multiply 0 0.0072 by 1,000 to get the 7.2. And then I'm left with just no there. Okay? So, it's not hard to do these in your head. Let's say I had uh, some energy, the energy equation, and it came out with an answer of um, 10,000, let's say no, 12,000, 12 million, 12 million joules. Okay. 
So I kind of gave it away when I said a million. 12, you know, all these zeros, this is 12 million. I could write this as 12 megajoules. Okay. Going through that same process, I divided by a million and multiplied by a million. Okay. Let's go through that. If I divide by one times 10 to the six, that's a million. Okay, that would give me into the, the 12. 12 million divided by a million is 12. Okay, and then I need to multiply by the prefix cap m. Look up cap m, that's mega. Okay, times 10 to the six. And we get some energy there. 12 megajoules. Okay. All right, so one thing that's useful, I'm going to go to MATLAB, and this also shows up on your calculator. You can put your calculator into a mode. All right, so I'm going to do it here. All right, so I'm switching to MATLAB. Just a second. So let's switch to MATLAB, share my screen with MATLAB. Okay. And so what I do here is I put MATLAB, and it's not so much, I'm not trying to show you how to use MATLAB. I'm trying to show you what could show up on your calculator. It's harder for me to screen test the calculator. Okay, so I'm gonna do format short ENG for engineering notation. And now if I type in a number like 0 0.0034, okay, that shows up as 3.4 times 10 to the minus third. The 10 to the minus third gives me the milli prefix. Okay, so if this were 0 0.0034 farads, okay, then this would be 3.4 millifarads. Okay, let's do another one. Let's say I measured something and I got 0 0.000032 meters. Okay, so putting that into engineering notation, I just hit enter. I don't have to think about counting all the decimal places and sliding things over. When I hit enter, this is in engineering notation. So it's 32 times 10 to the minus six. Okay, so this would be, if I had 0 0.000032 meters, that would be 32 micrometers. Okay, all right, so let's do another one with a big number. Let's say I had 4780000. 000. A bunch of zeros, and this was some unit of measurement like newtons. Okay. All right. So how many, you know, what's the prefix we should use for this? Well, I count this off. One, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like, you know, if I was, you know, before I press the button, I would say 478 mega newtons. Okay. But it makes it easy if I hit enter. E to the six, that's, that tells me exactly the prefix because it's an engineering notation. Your calculator should do this too. If you set your calculator to an engineering mode, you should be able to easily tell what the prefix is for this particular number. Okay, so it's 478 mega newtons would be the answer in here. Okay, so um, this becomes automatic. You start working problems and you can easily start adding a prefix in to get uh, the number on the most easily read scale. Uh, this was discussed also in the Hagen book. All right, so good luck with that. Uh, answer the quiz questions, and uh, I'm sure you'll do well with it.